lab tech innovations hello students today we are going to study the most important part of the chapter called probability there are certain theorems in probability and we are going to cover those theorems actually there are three theorems one is called the addition theorem second is called multiplication theorem and the third one is called base theorem now both this all these theorems have a very special place in the theory of probability so i am going to cover this entire topic in three different lectures the first lecture will be only for addition theorem second lecture will be only for multiplication and third theorem the third lecture will be only for base theorem right so that it will be easier for you to grasp and then go to the next lecture okay so once you have finished the first lecture think about it solve some problems then second lecture think about it solve some problems and third lecture think about it and solve some problems i again and again advise you that do not go for the solutions even if it is available anywhere try to do the problem on your own as much as possible struggle with the problem deal with the problem you know uh, find out some uh, i mean try, go to your wits end to solve the problem and if you cannot then go for the solution the result will be amazing you will come to know that you were quite on the right path but somehow you did not had the confidence of achieving the final result that will create lot of confidence in your methodology and your preparation okay so my advice is don't go for the solution immediately try to do it on your own try to develop your ideas and struggle with the problem and doesn't matter how much time it takes you know but do not give up unless you have tried everything and now you know that you have, you have to give up you surrender solve the problem okay okay let me start with the addition theorem okay so as i said later on we'll deal with these in this so today's lectures will be only about what addition theorem and its corollaries corollaries means what some basic theorems which are deduced from the main theorem that is called addition theorem now what is an addition theorem i will first of all write down the statement okay so let us write down the statement first statement if a and b are any two events correct in the sample space in the sample space s right then probability of a union b is equal to probability of a plus probability of b minus probability of a intersection b this is the theorem that we are going to prove this is our main theorem right this is called addition theorem pa plus pb minus p of a intersection b now this theorem is actually taken from the corresponding theorem of set theory because suppose there are so let uh the sample space contain contain let us say uh uh x number of elements so the sample space contain x number of elements event a contains let us say n number of elements event b contains m number of elements 
एंड ए इंटरसेक्शन बी यू नो कंटेन्स पी नंबर ऑफ एलिमेंट्स सो लेट अस रिप्रेजेंट दिस केस बाय यूजिंग वेन डायग्राम इन सेट थ्योरी यू आर यूज्ड टू वेन डायग्राम वेयर वी ऑलवेज ड्रॉ द सैंपल स्पेस एज द यूनिवर्सल सेट a rectangle basically and a and b are the two events that means they are subsets of the sample space this is a sample space so a is a subset of sample space and b is a subset of sample space we do not know whether they intersect or not so in general we'll assume that they intersect okay so this is the set a this is the set b and you all know this common portion is nothing but a intersection b correct now this diagram is very clear now if you look at this diagram you will realize that we are given that this shaded part the shaded part is a intersection b and it contains p number of elements so there are p elements here there are p elements here and total number of elements in a total number of elements in a are n total number of elements in a are in n but common elements are p so remaining elements are here and they are nothing but n minus p because the number elements here are those which are in a but not in the intersection right in the intersection there are p elements therefore the this part this non shaded part of a is called, will have n minus p elements and the similarly this part will have m minus p elements okay so one thing is very clear now here the distribution is very simple see a contains n elements calculate it n minus p plus p a has got n elements m minus p plus p p has got p uh, m elements and intersection has uh, exactly p elements okay now so this is what we have already observed okay now let us see as i said so if you want number of elements you know number of elements in a union b you know number of elements in a union b that means in this total figure of 8 uh, you know this figure of 8 this figure of 8 total it is made up of three parts this is one part this is second part and this is third part right so that is a union b so what does it contain it contains n minus p elements plus p elements plus m minus p elements correct is very clear that this entire region this entire region this entire region is made up of three regions this half uh, lunar type of elements this half element this is the common element so this is the element so what does this mean this means minus p and plus p will get cancel so here it is n plus m minus p correct so number of elements in a union b is n plus m minus p but that is nothing but number of elements in a plus number of elements in b minus number of elements in a intersection b correct so this is quite easily established here okay but we want to be we want to convert them into probabilities probabilities means what the number of elements in a event divided by number of elements in the Uh, sample space so sample space as we have assumed contains x elements so therefore probability of a union b will be equal to what number of elements in a multiplied divided by number of elements in sample space plus number of elements in b divided by number of elements in sample space minus number of elements in a intersection b divided by number of elements in sample space right which means this is equal to probability of you know a this is probability of b and this is probability of a intersection b so we have proved our addition theorem okay so addition of theorem says that if you want to find out probability of a union b then you will have to first of all find the probability of a probability of b add them but from them you subtract probability of a intersection b but this theorem has got many corollaries and those corollaries also we will study regularly so corollary number 1 c o r 
नंबर वन वॉट इज द करोलरी नंबर वन इफ ए एंड बी आर डिसजॉइंट इफ ए एंड बी आर म्यूचुअली एक्सक्लूसिव सेट्स म्यूचुअली एक्सक्लूसिव एक्सक्लूसिव सेट आई मीन सॉरी इवेंट्स नॉट सेट बिकॉज वी आर वी मस्ट राइट इन द लैंग्वेज ऑफ प्रोबेबिलिटी इवेंट्स सपोज देर आर म्यूचुअली एक्सक्लूसिव इवेंट्स नाउ यू अंडरस्टैंड म्यूचुअली एक्सक्लूसिव इवेंट मीन्स वॉट द ए इंटरसेक्शन बी कंटेन्स नो एलिमेंट्स एट ऑल इट इज फाइव सो नंबर ऑफ एलिमेंट्स देर फोर इन ए इंटरसेक्शन बी विल बी जीरो करेक्ट सो इन केस ऑफ mutually exclusive sets events so number of L if a and b a and b are a and b are mutually exclusive mutually exclusive then they have nothing in common which means a intersection b is empty that means number of elements in a intersection b is what zero correct so therefore probability of a intersection b is what zero correct so therefore applying this theorem so what will happen to this theorem now therefore probability of a union b is equal to probability of a plus probability of b probability of b plus probability of b minus probability of a intersection b but that means probability of a plus probability of b minus 0 so if the events are mutually exclusive then probability of a union b is nothing but probability of a and probability of b correct so this corollary we have proved okay this is one corollary second corollary of this this is a corollary of the corollary now you know that if i take a set a if a bar is complement complement of a you understand the concept of complement complement means if this is sample space this is a this outside part is called complement so this is a this is a complement okay so the elements which are not in a but a, a, they are in sample space is called a complement so entire sample space sample space a is made up of what because either the elements are in a or not in a so that means a union a dash a dash or i'm sorry a, i'm using a notation a bar okay so a union a bar okay a bar means those elements which are not in a so any element in sample space is either in a or not in a right so therefore probability of s is nothing but probability of a union a bar okay that means according to our theorem probability of a plus probability of a bar minus probability of a intersection a bar correct now but a intersection a bar is what there cannot be any element which is in a and which is not also in a therefore there are no elements here so according to our earlier uh, conclusion this means probability of s is equal to probability of a plus probability of a bar but probability of s is always 1 right so 1 is equal to pa plus pa bar this gives us a very important result that probability of a bar complement of a is 1 minus probability of a right so this is our second corollary correct so p of a bar is equal to 1 minus probability of a now let us take a third corollary so this is corollary 2 actually this is corollary 3 sorry now let us take the corollary number 3 so we are going to extend our theorem and we are going to arrive at corollary number 4 corollary 4 is like this a union b union c is equal to probability of a plus probability of b plus 
probability of C uh, minus probability of A intersection B minus probability of B intersection C minus probability of C intersection A plus probability of A intersection B, B intersection C probability of C intersection A plus probability of A intersection B intersection C. Now such a big statement is there. So you will be wondering how this sentence, but actually it's nothing but a common sense. It's nothing but common sense. I'll show you one example and you'll come to know why it is like this. Okay. Just imagine there is one village, you know, this is the village. Okay. And in this village, suppose there are some number of people who are participating, I mean staying or they are residents. So let us say the residents are, uh, let us say residents are 100. Okay. So it's a small village, there are only 100 residents. And in that small village, because it is a border village, there are some people who read a newspaper called Lok Satta. There are some people who are reading a newspaper called, uh, let us say, Indian Express. And there is a third category of people who are reading what? The newspaper Times of India. Correct? Now this is how the, and some people are not reading anything, they are not in this state at all, right? So therefore, out of 100, let us assume that there are say, uh, 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 say uh, five people who are reading what? All the three papers. Then there are uh, say ten per people who are reading Lok Satta and Indian Express. So let us call it five. So this is five, this is five. And here there are some seven elements. So five plus five, ten and se uh, uh, seven. And then only Lok Satta reading people are five. So that means five plus five plus five, seven, uh, fifteen plus seven, twenty-two people. Now here twenty-two here let us call it uh, 9, here let us call it 3, here let us call it 8, okay. So this is how the configuration is. So you will realize that there are students, uh, there are people who are reading Lok Satta. So we want to find out how many people are left out. I mean, they are not interested in reading any kind of newspaper, wise people, right. So they should be counted, right. So now let us find out how many people are reading Lok Satta, number of people reading Lok Satta, NL. That is addition of all these three, right? So that is 5 plus 5 plus 5, 15 plus 7. 15 plus 7 is 22. So there are 22 people who read Lok Satta. Number of people who are reading Indian Express. So let us call it NI. How many are there? 5, 5, 10. 10 plus 3, 13. 13 plus 9. 13 plus 9, again it is 22. Okay, fine. So how many people are reading, you know, Times of India? Times of India, 5, 15 plus 3, that is 18, right? 18 plus 8, 18 plus 8 is 26. So there are 26 people who are reading what? Times of India. Now let us say, I want to find out number of people who are not reading anything. Right? So, number of people who are not reading anything will be 100. Total people are 100, right? Minus, suppose I s subtract all of them, that means number of people who are reading Lok Satta plus number of people who are reading Indian Express plus number of people who are reading Times of India. Correct? Now, suppose I add all these three, what happens is those people who are reading Lok Satta and Indian Express they will come in this list as well as in this list. That means they will be subtracted twice. But they need to be subtracted only once. Isn't it? So, therefore, they will have to be added. Correct? So, n minus this. Okay? So, now, okay? So, those people who are reading Lok Satta and Indian Express are, have already come in this list, they are also come, suppose I am reading Lok Satta and Indian Express, I am here as well as I am here, that means I am here, I am here counted twice, 
whereas I should be counted only once. So therefore, my uh, count must be reduced by one. So number of people who are reading Lok Satta and Indian Express, they must be subtracted, right? Similarly, those people who are reading Indian Express and Times of India are also listed twice. So they are to be subtracted once. So number of elements in I intersection T and lastly number of elements in T intersection L, right? So those people who are reading both the newspapers are now added only once because I was, but there is a problem here. If there is a person who's reading all the three newspapers, look at him. Suppose I am the person, I read all Lok Satta, Indian Express as well as Times of India. So I, 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 I am here, but I am not here. I am not here. I am, I am, I mean, I am here. I am here and I am here. So I will be counted thrice and I will be subtracted twice. Correct. So that means I will be counted thrice and subtracted thrice. That means I am not there at all. But I am one of the members of this class who read newspapers, right? Remember, I am here. 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 Therefore, I have been, I am not there at all. Three times I have been added. Three times I have been subtracted. Which means my presence has to be acknowledged by writing what? Number of people who are reading T intersection L intersection uh, T intersection uh, L intersection I. Correct? So I should be added. Correct? Now you will understand one thing that that means you will have to take count of all these things. So this is what if you divide these NL, NI by total number of sample space that will give you probability theorem. Okay? So suppose that means the probability of, so this means what? Number of, so 100, that is number of elements in sample space is equal to 100, you know, minus this NL plus NI uh, plus NT minus NL intersection I minus n i intersection t minus n t intersection l right and plus now number of elements in all the three l intersection i intersection t that will give me the correct answer correct so if i want to reduce this whole thing into probability then i'll have to divide by ns correct so therefore ns divided by ns right will give me here 1 and here it is number of NL upon NS. So everywhere if you divide by NS, it will become probability and that will give you the required theorem. Probability of A intersection B intersection C. So this is one way of looking at the theorem. But in 12th standard examination, they don't give you or they don't give you such details uh, treatment. So I will give you the standard proof for this. Let us say. What is the standard proof? Standard proof is very easy. Let us see. Standard proof. Let us take. I want to find out probability of A union B union C. So I will say let B union C, let it be called L. B union C, let it be called L. B union C, this set, let us call it L, which means this implies probability of what? A union L, correct? Now we can apply our addition theorem here. So probability of A plus probability of L minus probability of A intersection L, correct? Because now there are only two sets, but L is B union C. So that means probability of A plus probability of what? B union C minus probability of A intersection B union C. Oh, 
So now we are free to apply the theorem again, right? So therefore, this is equal to probability of A plus probability of B plus probability of B intersection C minus probability of uh, probability of B probability of B, uh, A probability of B probability of uh, sorry probability of B and I want to write here probability of now I want to apply P B plus P C minus P of B intersection C probability of B intersection C minus probability of now look at this carefully there is a distributive law in case of union and intersection so this intersection is distributive over union that means I can distribute A intersection on B as well as C and I will take the union that means this law is A intersection B and right? intersection B and so this is A A intersection B union A intersection C this is called distributive law A intersection B is like multiplication and addition A into B plus A into C is like that so A intersection B union A intersection C fine so again there are two sets here and we can apply our same theorem once more so now we will write it like this P of A plus P of B plus P of C minus P of B intersection C right minus let us put a bracket around right so now this is like one set another set so that is probability of A intersection B plus probability of B intersection C minus probability of A intersection B intersection A intersection C right wow what does that mean that means this becomes probability of A plus probability of B plus probability of C minus probability of B intersection C minus probability of A intersection B minus probability of B intersection C plus probability of. Now here A intersection A has come twice. So A intersection A is A. So it will come only once. So that is A intersection B intersection C. Yes. So we accomplished our goal by applying the same addition theorem not once but twice okay not twice we applied it thrice we applied it here first of all here we applied then we applied here and then we applied here also right so three times we applied this theorem and we have completed this standard proof correct one last corollary i would like to uh, complete and then this lecture will be over there is a uh, operation called del operation what is del operation? Del operation means what? That if you have a set A, event A, this is sample space, okay? And this is another set B, okay? So this is uh, B and suppose this is A, right? Now A del B means what? A del B is also an operation. This operation is called A minus B union B minus A. A minus B means what? Those elements which are in A but not in B. That means this is A minus B. Correct? So this set is A minus B. And what is this set then? This set is B minus A. Elements in B but not in A. Right? That is called and union of this is called A del B. Correct? So union of this is called A del B. So uh, that means A minus B and B minus A. That means what? Just look at it from the other point of view. So A minus B means what? A intersection B complement. Correct? A minus B. Elements which are in A, not in B. Not in B means they are in B in complement. Right? Union. They are in B but not in A. That means B intersection A complement. Correct? So now, suppose I apply probability theorem to this. Then what happens? See, probability of what? Probability of A intersection B bar, right, union B 
intersection A bar. Correct? So this is what I want to find out. Okay? Now according to our theorem, this is equal to what? Probability of A intersection B bar plus probability of B intersection A bar minus probability of A intersection B bar intersection B intersection A bar. Correct? This is what we get. Okay? So probability of A intersection B probability of B intersection sorry uh, probability of uh, A intersection B bar. Okay? Probability of A intersection B bar this. That means probability of A intersection B bar plus probability of B intersection A bar. Now here all are, you know, A intersection, that means actually there is an associative law. So I need not put a bracket around this and I can bring them anywhere. So it is A intersection A bar, intersection B bar, intersection A bar, A, B, intersection, not A, uh, intersection B. Uh, okay. So, uh, A and A bar have combined and now B bar and B. So, intersect B, it is uh, B intersection B bar, right? Now, you realize that this is nonsense. A intersection A bar, there are no elements. B intersection B bar, there are no elements. So, this is an empty set. So, this uh, disappears completely, right? So, therefore, this is nothing but probability of A intersection B bar plus probability of what? B intersection A bar, correct? So, this is one of the corollary, okay? So, now, this is the del operation. So, probability of A del B is equal to probability of A intersection B bar plus probability of B intersection A bar. Okay. So, now we will do the next theorem in our next lecture. Remember what we have done. We have done a very simple theorem. Probability of A union B is P A plus P B minus P intersection A is intersection B. We applied it to A and A complement and then we realized probability of A complement is 1 minus probability of A. Then we applied it to three sets P A union B union C P A plus P B plus P C minus a intersection B, B intersection C, C intersection A plus A intersection B intersection C and then lastly we applied it to a del operation. Okay. So that should be the correct answer. Okay. So that ends our this lecture. Okay. Fine. Thank you.